Now, one of the things that is an interesting paradigm shift yeah, in education, um, I, I call this the C to C education shift. All right, and let me explain what I mean. All right, um, I think the C to C shift illustrates the fact that education really needs to change its paradigm and its approach. Because a lot of times, I mean, as educationists, we sometimes joke that we are still teaching in the 1970s and 80s, and, you know? So even though we are in 2019 now, uh, and the world has changed, a lot of us as educators, I mean, the way we are communicating to our students, the kind of content we are teaching, the kind of skills we are focusing on, whether it's in school or university, our benchmark and our framework is still 1970, 1980, because that's when we went to school. That's when we went to university. You know, so we are a bit left behind, and, and I think the C to C shift illustrates as an example how we are lagging and how we need to quickly catch up. All right? so, so we say that, like, for example, in the 1970s and 80s, the analogy for education, in school education, was that they say that the human brain is like a cup, all right? an empty cup. And so when the child enters your school, it's like you know, they have got nothing in their head. <laughs> Right? So they come in, they've got an empty cup, and therefore the role of education is you fill the cup like, with, with water or milk or tetare or whatever it is. So you fill the cup, and the more full the cup is means the more successful education is. And of course, what we meant by that is the fact that, um, you know, that, that water, uh, filling of the cup is knowledge. So it's a lot of content, it's a lot of information. So education in the 80s, even up to the 90s, was very content driven. And, and so in the old days, you know, um, the, the kids who can memorize best, they win, right? They are the smartest. They are the ones who scores the best in the exams because, you know, the more knowledge you can retain in your cup, the better you're able to answer questions. Uh, and these are the smart kids, right? I mean, if you all remember when you were growing up, who were the smartest kids? Uh, these are the kids. They, they got the most information. All of the knowledge is in their head. You ask them anything, they are like walking encyclopedias. But of course, what's happened now in the last you know, 10, 20 years is that now you've got the internet. Now when you've got a conversation and you want some information, you want a fact about something, fact check. For example, hey, what is the capital of Portugal? Hey, nobody memorizes anything. Somebody just takes out the phone and click, 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 click. Wikipedia, it's Lisbon, right? You know, so the idea here is that the internet has changed the dynamic of how we work, how we learn our whole lives, because in a sense, the internet now has become an extension of our brain, right? All of us have access to the internet. And, and because of that, I mean, memorization has, you know, while, while it's still part of education, no longer plays as important a role, or should no longer play as important a role. So now we say, look, with the internet, all the information is there. You know, a lot of memorization and keeping a lot of things in long-term memory to a large extent, it's actually a waste of space, right? Because uh, you know, all of us have same, the same access. So now, we would say the focus has shifted from being able to retain information to in an internet world where there's this whole ocean of information that all of us have access and free access to. It, it's about navigating in that ocean so that we're not lost, right? So I would say from a cup, huh? That's the first thing. The analogy for education has had to change. So now education is about training our brain to be a compass. Right? I mean, I, this is, you know, looks a bit like a compass. And a compass, as we know, I mean, basically points north, right? A compass helps you find your bearings. And so I think in an internet age, in this fourth industrial revolution, we call it an analytics age, and an age of data analytics where data is abundant. And all of us, like I say, have access to the same data. But this is billions and pieces of data. The people who are going to be successful, whether it's in the tech industry or in business or in medicine or in any industry, are going to be people who know how to navigate in that sea of information. Meaning, they need to know what questions to ask, what information to look for, where to get the information, how to discern whether the information is reliable, valid or not valid, fake versus real. 
you know, uh, they need to be able to join the dots. I mean, one of my favorite quotes by Li Ka Shing, you know, I mean, the very famous CEO, also known to be very philosophical, right? You know, uh, he talked, Li Ka Shing talked about the, the fact that we live in an age of synthesis. He says, in order to be a successful entrepreneur, a successful business leader, information is all there. But, you know, the people who can see the trends, who can look at all the data and connect the dots, and, and they are the ones who then see the opportunities to start the businesses. You know, so all of us can be looking at the same data, but we, we are all looking at random stuff. They look at the numbers and they see the patterns and the trends. So, so synthesis, being able to put information together, connect the dots. Now, this is really, I think, the challenge for education in the 21st century. And so I think, you know, this shift is important. Huh? You know, so from cup to compass, C to C, this is an absolutely fundamental shift for education. Is why? Because look, if 18, 90% of our school-based classroom work, uh, all of our time is spent on memorizing because we're filling the cup, filling the cup, filling the cup. I mean, my argument is that a lot of time then is taken away from spending, you know, time focusing on developing the skills of our young people to navigate. To, 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 you know, we, we say higher order thinking skills, all right, POTS, you know, higher order thinking skills, things like application and synthesis and analysis and evaluation. I mean, that's really where schools should be focusing time on. And, and, you know, I mean, the whole argument about wait until university, I mean, that's wrong, you know. I mean, I taught in university for over 20 years and often our comment would be, if these kids are coming in at 17, 18 and, and they have no such skills, I mean, they have no idea how to think independently and critically at a high level, you know, so they can't do synthesis or creation or analysis or evaluation. I mean, in three years, it's almost impossible to actually develop those skills from scratch. So I think, I think you know, the paradigm and the awareness now is that in K-12 education, you know, these higher order thinking skills, they need to be developed from school. You know, in, in primary school and secondary school, and it's possible. I mean, I mean I've seen this happen in schools I've, I've worked with, the schools I'm working in now. I mean, we often underestimate the cognitive ability of children to be able to actually do higher order thinking skills. But I mean, they can. You know, if you put them in a classroom environment, in an educational environment, where they are able to actually, you know, learn and pick up these skills, they're given an opportunity to think for themselves, they, they are able to do it. So I think C to C, eh, this is something that we need to really think about in our education systems and programs, you know. Less focus on just filling the kids head with a lot of knowledge, a lot of memory work, you know, uh, a lot of testing. Moving that to assessing them for higher order thinking skills. So developing the child's mind to be a compass so that they're able to find their way in this sea of information.